Welcome back. In the wake of recent mass shootings, gun reform has taken center stage on Capitol Hill, but everyone has different ideas on the best ways to go about this. And the shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, just a few weeks ago, has people thinking again, as it was an armed citizen who stopped the shooter. Young Voices contributor Benjamin Ayanian is up late with me tonight to talk about all this. Benjamin, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, thank you for having me on. So, you know, we've become sadly numb to all of these mass shootings. I mean, what, 350 just this year? Uh, we were looking at some data that said there, has, there was a mass shooting every week uh, this year so far in 2022. It's maddening. It's sad. I mean, from uh, a mass shooting at a 4th of July parade to the Uvalde school shooting, which my heart still breaks just thinking about those kids that were stuck in that classroom. But this situation in the Indiana mall shooting is unique because uh, this time an, an armed citizen uh, kind of intervened. Can you kind of tell us about the situation a little bit more and how rare this is? Yeah, so what happened in Greenwood, Indiana, was an individual brought a few firearms, about 100 rounds of ammunition, into a mall and opened fire in a food court. And within 15 seconds, a armed, legally armed bystander had neutralized the shooter with his own handgun. And in 2021, there were four um, active shooters stopped by armed bystanders. And even earlier this year in West Virginia, we saw a woman stop an active shooter. Um, the individual was actually a convicted felon, the, the um, active shooter was, who shot at a party in West Virginia and she was legally carrying a pistol and she stopped him before he was able to injure anyone. And now it is relatively rare for an armed civilian to stop an active shooter. Um, according to Texas State University data, there were 464 active shooter events between 2000 and 2021, and 24 of them were stopped by an armed civilian um, shooting them. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often, but the Indiana mall shooting police chief there uh, in Indiana, this is what he said. He said many more people would have died last night if not for a responsible armed citizen that took action very quickly within the first two minutes of the shooting. I mean, that gunman was armed I mean, with multiple we weapons, 100 rounds of ammunition. He was in the bathroom of this mall ready to continue firing. So thank God for someone stopping him in his tracks. But you, it begs the question, you know, is that even the right thing to do sometimes, even if as an armed citizen? Because I've I've been hearing different accounts. You know, uh, sometimes law enforcement are applauding uh, these heroes, and some are saying, "Hey, this can also cause a lot of confusion." Because if you are pointing a gun at the shooter or the gunman, uh, you may be mistaken for the gunman yourself, and that has happened before, where uh, the gun, the shooter or the or a civilian has shot the shoot the gunman, but then police have shot the civilian. Civilian. Absolutely. There, there are risks involved anytime there's an active shooter, no matter what way you handle it. And what we're all trying to figure out as we see all these tragic events occurring, you know, we see them on our news feed almost weekly, it feels like, we're trying to figure out what is the best way to keep people safe. And at the end of the day, police response time, you know, varies. And also, police do not always act the way that, you know, they should. We saw that in Uvalde. Uvalde we saw that right. um, in Parkland, Florida, back in 2018. And so it is a something that needs to be truly considered is our armed civilians, do they have an active role um, in stopping these mass shootings? And it is my opinion that we are safer when armed law-abiding civilians are carrying firearms. I know there's a discussion right now, of course, about AR-15 style weapons, these military style weapons and the kind of damage that they can cause when they are used. Um, do you know where we're at right now in this gun violence debate when it comes to gun control? Well, uh, I think that there are a few statistics that we need to think about when we're talking about, you know, rifles. So first, rifles like an AR-15, they're semi-automatic, just like, you know, a nine millimeter millimeter pistol. You have to pull the trigger one time to release one bullet. And, you know, some people want to ban these weapons, which I think is a little bit of you know misguided energy. I don't think we should be focusing so much on rifles at the end of the day. They account for a for about 3% of firearm deaths a year. That's a Pew Research statistic from 2020. 
And mass shooting deaths, depending on how you define a mass shooting, is anywhere between a fraction of a percent to 1% of all firearm deaths. And the vast majority of mass shootings are actually um, carried out with handguns. And so if we look at rifles and mass shootings and the deaths that come in those scenarios, it's a small fraction of 1% of all gun deaths every year. And so I, I don't personally understand the focus on rifles. I think that the biggest issue with them is people think, you know, they're very imposing and they're scary. But uh, another thing about rifles is you can't conceal them. Um, one could actually argue that, you know, a mass shooter could do more damage by, you know, concealing a handgun because you don't see the threat coming. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that we are safer when law abiding citizens are carried, carrying concealed handguns. And I think that Greenwood, Indiana, um, just provided yet another example of that reality. Oh, I, I wish we had more time because this is a topic I would love to go on with you uh, a lot because uh, I will say those AR-style rifles, a lot of people are saying, why, what's the use for them? Why do we even have these military-style rifles accessible to people and the kind of damage that they can do, uh, especially in some of these shootings that we have seen? Uh, I think the accessibility factor is a debate that will be going on and on. Unfortunately, we do not have a solution for what's happening in the country. Sadly, so I hope that these discussions actually lead to some kind of a resolution. Uh, thank you so much, Benjamin, for staying up late with us tonight. We will bring you back, of course, to continue this conversation. But for now, we will be right back.